What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be a bit interesting. As you can see, we have the Forest River Surveyor positioned in a way that allows us to kind of use it as a portable living room slash rest station whenever we have events going on out here. I shot a video, put it on my other channel so you guys could see specifically why we have it set up this way. But now I need to move it back to where it was. And it had me thinking about a question a lot of people ask me related to this section of a travel trailer. Not a fifth wheel, but a travel trailer. And I wanna talk about that. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So a lot of folks wanna know what specifically a weight distribution hitch does. And I've talked about this in previous videos. Basically, I've pointed out to where, you know, a weight distribution hitch does exactly what it claims to do just in the title, weight distribution. It distributes weight from one area to another area. The weight doesn't disappear. I mean, I think most people know that. It doesn't just vanish. But what you're essentially doing is moving where that weight is or where it's being applied and the method of doing that can in some ways cause problems. So you have to be very careful, and that's really what the point of this video is. Right now, the surveyor is level front to back, even though it's not level side to side, which wasn't a big deal for us, but it is level front to back. And you can tell by looking at the back tires that the ground is not completely level under the tires. Now, why am I making this point? Whenever you look at the front A-frame section right here, which is this front section that looks like it's in the letter A, the reason why it is so important to understand how to properly use a weight distribution hitch is because it can also help you understand what circumstances you need one and also what type of damage you could potentially do if you're not careful when using a weight distribution hitch. Now, when I say a weight distribution hitch does exactly what it says in the name, it distributes weight, how does it do that? Well, it distributes weight by essentially applying pressure downward on your A-frame. That downward pressure is gonna create an arch effect like this. So if you, if you imagine a pickup truck right here and the back of the trailer pressing down on the back of the pickup truck, causing the back of the pickup truck to squat, let's say that that pickup truck has relatively soft suspension, kind of like that Ram 1500 over there. If we hitch this trailer up to that truck, which that truck does not have a tow hitch on the back, so we can't do it, but if we did, you would see the back of that truck squat tremendously. It would probably squat two and a half inches because that is a V6 Ram pickup truck, does not have a tremendous amount of payload capacity, even though I know some people think automatically because if you have a lower weight truck, then it's going to have greater payload capacity. That's not always the case. That truck right there is not designed to carry or tow a lot of stuff. Anyways, we hitch it up, it's gonna drop down significantly. You would absolutely see the front of the RV sloping down and the back of the truck sloping down or up to the front. So what do weight distribution bars do? They essentially connect the truck and trailer. It's a hitch, right? And you have these L brackets or even with the B&W Continuum, and as you apply downward pressure on the bars like this, by tightening them or adjusting them, and with the B&W Continuum, it's using this little hydraulic pump mechanism right here. As you apply that pressure, that weight, that pressure is being applied directly to this section of the frame. Why is that so important? Applying a small amount of weight distribution to a trailer that's relatively level. Let's say when we hook this up to the truck, it only drops the suspension of the truck an inch. And all we're trying to do is compensate for roughly one inch of sag on the back of the truck. So we're distributing weight, and weight, of course, doesn't always have to do with the angle of the vehicle whenever you're hitched up. A lot of times it has to do with how much weight is being moved around. But for the sake of most weight distribution hitches, you're trying to get your truck and your trailer level. Well, if you don't have much leveling to do, you're not putting a tremendous amount of weight downward on this front A-frame section of your trailer. You're still putting quite a bit. I'd probably say in the area of 200 to 300 pounds. But let's say if you have your trailer set up in a manner to where your trailer is causing your truck to really, really squat, say two and a half inches, three inches. 
the amount of downward pressure you're going to be pushing on this A-frame section. Imagine pushing down right there or right here in the case of the B&W Continuum. And that amount of pressure that's spanning across this entire piece of tubular steel is going to double, triple, quadruple. It can load up very, very quickly to upwards of 1,500 to 2,000 pounds worth of weight that you're pressing down on this section right here to create this arching effect like this. Essentially, you're creating an arch from the back of your RV at the lowest point because as you add weight distribution here, even though you're pushing weight down here, you're actually lifting everything up together and more weight is transferring to the back of your trailer and to the front of your truck. So whenever you start applying weight distribution here, even though you're pushing down a lot of weight on this section, you're essentially trying to create an arching effect between the suspension of your truck and the RV itself. And that arching effect adds a lot of weight right there. So when people want to tow something that's relatively heavy, and this is not a heavy travel trailer, but if you put a 30 foot, 35 foot travel trailer behind a half ton truck, and I'm only using a half ton truck as reference because they're gonna be the most common truck people will probably utilize to tow that type of trailer. And that trailer has a 1200 pound tongue weight to it. And then you start loading things up, you start putting more stuff in the bed of your truck because you have an open bed, one of the perks of towing a travel trailer. And all of a sudden your truck is like this, your trailer's like this, it's dipping down in the center because the trailer is adding so much tongue weight to the back of your truck. And you're like, you know what, let's just fix this. Let's get our weight distribution dialed in. Let's level everything out. You have to think what you're trying to counteract. You're essentially saying the amount of weight that's being applied right here, I'm gonna move it all of a sudden to the back of my trailer and to the front of my truck to level everything out. But how are you doing that? And what most people don't realize is that the pressure that's being applied right here to create that weight distribution is downward pressure on this section of the frame. And that is something that can eventually lead to a frame failure. It can eventually lead to you damaging or destroying the front frame section. Now let's take this a step further because I know I already have people in the comments section that are gonna be like, why don't they just beef that section up? And they probably could, to be honest with you. They could probably turn this into, instead of what, a two by five, they could probably turn it into like a two by seven, a two by eight, maybe go with a thicker gauge wall. There are a few things they could do. It adds a lot of weight. We all understand that, right? The more, the more material you add, the more mass you're gonna add, the more mass is gonna equal more weight. So yes, that's absolutely something they could do. It would definitely increase the tongue weight significantly. If you picked up this piece of steel right here by itself, it's probably not gonna weigh a heck of a lot, but if you increase that to like quarter inch thick steel, it would definitely go up in weight significantly. That said though, they could probably do that. I've even had my own ideas that I've talked about in previous videos where they could create maybe a separate box channel beneath it or create a steel plate to reinforce certain high stress areas right here. For the most part, you know, the number of people who have had any type of issue with this type of a setup is very, very low, but I think one of the more extreme scenarios that often plays out is that water gets into this tube and it starts rusting from the inside out. And then you start getting material that is thinner and thinner and thinner. And then you couple that with weight distribution and now you're asking too much of a piece of steel that's been compromised. So, you know, whenever we talk about this piece of steel, it's capped off on both ends. So water shouldn't easily be able to get in there, but water can still sometimes get in there or if water was trapped inside of there. But if rust forms on the inside of that relatively thin piece of steel, it could absolutely compromise it. But the number one thing that typically breaks the A-frame of a travel trailer is when you utilize too much weight distribution. That's the part people need to understand. Too much weight distribution is trying to get your hitch to overly compensate for the amount of downward pressure that's being applied to the back of your truck and trying to level out a truck that's overloaded or trying to level out a truck that's sagging too much because of the weight of the trailer. Now, when I talk about three quarter ton trucks for certain towing applications when it comes to travel trailers, that's one of the biggest reasons why I talk about utilizing a three quarter ton or even a one ton single rear wheel truck for travel trailers that are over a certain weight and size because you're not as reliant on needing a weight distribution hitch. Or if you do need weight distribution, you're only distributing a small amount of weight and you're only applying a relatively low amount of pressure to your A-frame section of your trailer. 
that's the part that I'm, I'm really hoping people understand and I'm repeating it more and more in this video is truly understanding just because you're distributing weight does not mean that the weight's disappearing from this area. You have a lot of physics going on over here. You have downward pressure being applied to the A-frame. Your truck itself is now turning into essentially an arch. You're creating a bow, which is adding more weight to the back of your trailer and the front of your truck but you're adding a tremendous amount of downward pressure to this section of your frame right here. Actually across this entire span right here. But the most vulnerable part is gonna be this section right here. So yes, again, there are ways to reinforce that. In most cases, the vast majority of cases, it doesn't need to be done. You're not going to subject that to the scenarios that I'm talking about because most folks understand what's half ton towable, what's three quarter ton towable, how much weight distribution do I really need to avoid a problem like this, and do I truly understand what's happening when I use a weight distribution hitch, right? I'm not just mysteriously transferring weight. I'm doing it in a very, very interesting way that a lot of people might not be able to comprehend that easily and I'm doing it by way of applying downward pressure here to lift the entire assembly up right here to cause weight to move here into the front of the truck so again these are all things that I think are, are critically important to understand and more important than understanding it this can keep you from getting caught on the side of the road or whenever you're transitioning from different road types this can prevent you from possibly being broken down and having a trailer that is non-movable so you know, I bring this up because there are folks that go over certain types of road conditions. And when you go over really, really bad road conditions, I'm not gonna claim any one highway or interstate is worse than another, or any one transition from interstate or concrete to asphalt or to dirt road is gonna cause this issue. But understand that when you are taking your RV over those types of roads, and if you have an excessive amount of weight distribution to where you have a tremendous amount of downward force pushing right here, and you hit certain expansion joints, and you hit certain transitions between different types of road surfaces, it can double, triple, quadruple the amount of energy that's being transferred to this span right here. And it can lead to a failure. Now. Why am, I, why am I saying this, right? There are obviously topics around frames. There's a lot of topics around frame failure. There's a lot of topics around travel trailers that have suffered from stuff like this for, for quite some time. But the reason why I'm telling you this is because when you look at the, the number of travel trailers that have been sold in the last couple of years, and you start thinking about the fact that you may be one of those people who is loading your trailer up in this way. You may be one of those people who is towing a travel trailer with an excessive amount of weight distribution and you haven't had a problem yet. That's what I'm trying to catch before you have a problem. That's the reason why I'm making this video. This is not a video to say that it is anybody's specific fault. This is a video to simply tell you that if you are one of those folks that has a 30 to 36 foot long travel trailer behind a relatively light duty truck and you get a lot of sag, you get a lot of downward pressure on the back of your truck, and you try to compensate that by using your weight distribution hitch to adjust this enormous amount of sag that you currently have to make everything level. When you're making those adjustments, you are applying more pressure than you can imagine to the front section of your A-frame in a downward. Now, couple that with a frame rail that might have rust inside of it. Couple that with a frame rail that might, maybe it doesn't have the best welds. Couple that with the front A-frame section that may not be the very best. Let's just put it that way. You do run the risk of possibly damaging the front A-frame section of your trailer. So I just wanted to point that out in this video. And I know I've repeated a lot of things here, but I think these are all really important things to try to understand so you can have a greater chance of avoiding being stuck on the side of the road, being stuck at an RV park, being stuck somewhere where you don't want to be stuck because the front section of your A-frame has failed. So again, not to point blame at anybody for this because at the end of the day, when you buy an RV, you just want it to hold up. You want it to do what you want it to do. And if there's things we can do as owners to prevent certain things from happening and keeping us stranded, that's really what the message here is. It's how can we take a proactive approach to preventing issues that could potentially impact us when we're out there on the road.
Anyways, guys, sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.